that butts up against the cup of the Lord. It's the cup of demons. And once you contaminate something in a cup and it's mixed in, you can't get it out. It's in there. You've polluted it. It's Christ and Belial. Christ or Satan. You can't have both. They are the temple. Paul says this. It's referenced in 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? And covenant equals reconciliation. We do not just walk into a covenant with God. He brings us in by adoption as sons and daughters. And this got them ready for the big reveal. It's verses 16b through 18. 16b says, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. This is absolutely covenant language front to back it is the needed context to understand this entire chapter and that's why he put it here I believe it is a mixture of verses from the beginning of the old testament the old covenant starting in Leviticus 26 12 and I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people and in Isaiah 52, 11, depart, depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing, go out from the midst of her, purify yourselves. This isn't just separatism, this is being sold out for God. It is not allowing the world or Satan to get in and pollute it. Depart, depart, depart. The church in Corinth and Cape May, all of the church in the world is the temple of God. We walk in covenant with him. What a promise. He walks with us. He walks in our midst, in the temple. God with us. Emmanuel. And here it is, here's why it's good to continue just for one verse into chapter 7. Because it's our response to all that we saw in chapter 6. Verse 1 in chapter 7. Since... We have these promises, beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. And we talked about that fear of God in chapter 5. It is a reverent awe of what he has done. It is not an abject terror that he's going to get us for what we have done. He made promises. He made covenant promises that, that he will put all of that on the cross. So we are the temple. So our response, no idols. No idols. We are separate from the world, but in a way that draws the world to the hope and peace we have. Yesterday, again, on our, our prayer walk, someone asked, how can we pray for you? Pray for hope. Well, that was an easy one. That was the most wide open door I have ever seen in presenting the gospel. And out came our tract from Cape Community Church with hope right on it. Hope for hard times. And this is someone who lives in a motel room. It's an easy one for us too. It's an easy one. We have the end of the Bible as proof that our suffering is toward an end. We have proof in our suffering, and a lot of you are suffering. As I said, we're we're up to about two a day on prayer requests. Your suffering is proof that there is a good end coming. In fact, the end in Revelation. In Revelation 7, 16 and 7, we have this promise. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
Do you believe that promise? Amen. It gets better. Revelation 21, 7. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. That's a promise. God, our Father, we, his sons and daughters. Covenant language right to the end. Covenant language is in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We see what God has done, and we see what we are to do from now on. Now that we have been saved. Now is the favorable time for God to act in another person's life. And the day of salvation is now for someone today. I pray it happens right here, right now, or online. But may we learn that we are to do all the things Paul and his cohort did. To serve and suffer for the king of kings with the mind of of Christ, and see what can happen from now on in your life. Because rejoice, we conquer. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you that we conquer in Christ, and that Christ works through us, so that everything we think is hard becomes easy when we know the creator of the universe works through us, and that you do the hard part. Father, I I pray that someone would simply believe and surrender their lives to you today because they see that this suffering in this world achieves an end. It works toward the end. We long for that day. We say, Jesus, come soon. But until that day, we are here And we go through trials and tribulations, but we know that we go through trials and tribulations and we are not alone. We are in a covenant with a a loving, merciful God who has a perfect plan, who is in control of every circumstance in our life and is working it toward this end. So I pray for anyone who who feels like they're going under and that they would reach out and that your hand would pull them up with the words, rejoice, we conquer. May we work with you as you work through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand, please, as we close our time together this morning? Jesus.
Jesus, he wore my sin, I'll gladly wear his name. He is the treasure, he is the answer. Oh, I choose the Jesus way. I choose surrender. I choose to love. Oh, God, my Savior, you'll always be enough. I choose forgiveness. I choose grace. I choose to worship no matter what I face. I choose the Jesus way. 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 I'll follow Jesus. I'll follow Jesus. He wore my sin. Gladly wear his name. He is the treasure. He is the answer. Oh, I choose the Jesus way. I'll follow Jesus. I'll follow Jesus. He wore my sin. Gladly wear his name. He is the answer. Oh, I choose the Jesus way. Oh, I choose the Jesus Here's a benediction. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all he does he prospers. Father, thank you for this day. Help us to trust you to make us prosper in all we do because you are God and not us. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace.